Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer A. Doudna were awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry on Wednesday, October 7th, becoming only the sixth and seventh women ever to win the award. Charpentier and Doudna developed the CRISPR-Cas9 tool which can edit DNA with a high degree of precision. Here is what you need to know. The 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to two women who developed CRISPR-Cas9, a tool that allows scientists to cut parts of the genome like a pair of molecular scissors. The CRISPR-Cas9 system is made up of a DNA-cutting enzyme called Cas9 and a guide RNA. The guide RNA leads the enzyme to a specific sequence in the genome that is to be cut. The guide RNA binds to the targeted sequence of DNA, and the Cas9 enzyme makes a precise cut across both strands of the double helix. The cell recognizes and attempts to repair the damaged sequence, but this can introduce a mutation, thus tricking the cell into disabling a gene. The cell can also be prompted to remake the targeted sequence using an edited portion of DNA as a template. Charpentier is the founding scientific and managing director of the Max Planck Unit for the Science of Pathogens in Berlin. Doudna is a professor of molecular and cell biology at the University of California, Berkeley. And yes, before you ask, CRISPR has already been used in China to make designer babies. Turns out experimenting with human DNA could have negative repercussions. Who knew? Last year, Chinese scientist He Jiankui revealed he had successfully edited the CCR5 gene in the embryos of twin girls using CRISPR-Cas9 technology. By altering this gene, he expected the twins would be protected from contracting HIV. However, new studies show he might have inadvertently shortened their life expectancy as well. According to the study published in Nature Medicine, scientists analyzed the DNA of 400,000 volunteers, some of which had mutated CCR5 genes. Results show that individuals with non-working CCR5 were 21% less likely to live to age 76. Apart from increased mortality rates, results also show that altering the said gene could also make individuals more susceptible to influenza and the West Nile virus. The problem with mixing around genes is you never know what you're going to get. An MIT Technology Review report states that genes have many functions, so blocking one part of them may bring the intended results, but also unexpected outcomes. To the dean of Harvard Medical School, George Daly, the experiment is an ethical and scientific failure. He told NPR, quote, Even when we think we know something about a gene, we can always be surprised and even startled, like in this case, to find out that a gene we thought was protective may actually be a problem. To other experts, this is just part of the scientific process. Speaking to NPR, George Church, a professor of genetics at Harvard, said that new technological developments are expected to come with unforeseen consequences, adding, quote, The first monoclonal antibodies were nearly deadly. The first gene therapies were indeed deadly. All kinds of means of transportation were and still are deadly. It's all about benefits versus risks. Hopefully, this study will serve as a wake-up call to stop messing with things we don't fully understand yet. Yeah, right. We're doomed. Last year, in November, a Chinese scientist allegedly used CRISPR, a gene-editing tool, to create the world's first gene-edited babies. According to an Associated Press report from The Time, He Jiankui said he altered the baby's DNA to remove a gene called a CCR5. This would make the twin baby girls immune to HIV. New research from UCLA has shown that removing the gene CCR5 could potentially be linked to enhancing one's ability to learn and form memories. The researchers tested their theory on mice. They altered the DNA of the mice to remove CCR5. This was found to enhance the animal's intelligence. According to a new study published in the journal Cell, people who lack CCR5 were found to have better cognition and were also found to recover faster from strokes. Follow-up studies about CCR5 are already taking place at UCLA, with participants being given Maraviroc, an HIV treatment, to see if it improves cognition. Alconi J. Silva, one of the researchers involved in the study, said that altering CCR5 was found to have big effects. However, he added that we're not ready for the consequences we could potentially face for mutating DNA. The FDA has given the all-clear to two pharmaceutical companies to begin a human gene editing trial. A joint clinical trial led by CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex will use gene editing to target sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. This will be the first confirmed CRISPR gene editing clinical trial to take place outside of China. 
According to a CRISPR Therapeutics news release, the gene editing therapy, called CTX001, will be used to modify a patient's stem cells to increase hemoglobin levels in red blood cells. The first trial of gene editing will be tested on two patients, with each being administered a single dose of CTX001. The patients will be monitored to see when the edited cells start producing mature blood cells, according to the news release. If everything goes well, the two companies will move to conduct clinical trials on a larger group of patients. CRISPR had previously been used by a Chinese scientist to create the world's first gene-edited babies. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.